This exercise is called scaption. Start laying on your back with your arms by your side. Then bring your arms up uh, in a V with your thumbs facing up all the way to shoulder height. Pause right there and then slowly bring them down. And try to maintain that V shape. You'll perform this exercise eight to ten times. This exercise is called shoulder abduction. Begin lying on your back with your arms by your side and your palms facing up. Just like making a snow angel, you're going to bring your arms out to the side, up to your shoulder height, making sure that you're keeping your arms flush to the bed or the floor. Then slowly bring them back to your side. Repeat one more time. You will perform this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called shoulder abduction and adduction. Begin lying on your back and then slowly bring your arms up to shoulder height. Touch your palms together and then slowly open your arms up as much as you can to a comfortable range. Then slowly bring them back together again. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called shoulder alphabet. Begin by lying on your back Bring your hands together, interlacing your fingers. With your elbows straight, bring your hand up to shoulder height. Then draw the alphabet on the ceiling, however you would like. If this exercise is too difficult, you can perform circles instead. Perform the entire alphabet or eight to 10 circles in each direction. This exercise is called shoulder external rotation. Begin by lying on your back, bend your elbow to form an L shape. Make sure that your elbows will stay glued to your sides. Then you're going to bring the back of your hand away from your body towards the bed. Go as far as you can within a comfortable pain-free range. Then slowly bring it back to your side. Make sure that your elbows stay glued to your side and that the movement is coming from the shoulder. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called shoulder protraction. Begin lying on your back, bring your arms up to shoulder height, then try to reach towards the ceiling by lifting your shoulders off the bed. Then gradually bring them down again. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called modified PNS. Begin lying on your back, then reach across your opposite hip. Reach your arm up and away from your body as far as you can within a comfort, comfortable zone. Then bring your arm back to your opposite hip again. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted shoulder scaption. Begin lying on your back with your weight in your hands Move your arms out to the side in the shape of a V. Raise your arms up to shoulder height, maintaining the V position and your elbows straight. Then slowly return your arms down to your side. Again, move your arms up, maintaining that V shape up to shoulder height and down to the starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted shoulder abduction. 
Begin lying on your back with your arms at your side, your palms facing up with your weights in your hands. Keeping your elbows straight, move your arms out to the side, away from your body, up to shoulder height, like making a snow angel. Then return to your starting position. Again, reach out to the side, making sure that the back of your arms stay flush to the surface that you're lying on. Then slowly return to your starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted shoulder abduction. Begin lying on your back with your arms at your side and your weights in your hands. Bring your arms up to shoulder height, then slowly bring them out to the side, making sure to keep your elbows straight. Then slowly bring your arms together again over your chest and back up to the side. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted shoulder protraction. Begin lying on your back with your arms at your side and your weights in your hand. Lift your arms up to shoulder height, keeping your elbows straight. Reach towards the ceiling by lifting your shoulder blades off the bed, then return to the starting position. Again, reach towards the ceiling by lifting your shoulder blades off the bed and return to the starting position. Perform this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted PNF. Begin lying on your back with your weight in your hand and your hands positioned across your body, touching your opposite hip. Raise your arm up and out to the side as far as you can within a comfortable range. Then reach back down across your body to touch your opposite hip again. Again, slowly reach up and out to the side as far as you can without pain. Then reach down across your body, back to the opposite hip. Perform this exercise eight to 10 times. Repeat. This exercise is called resisted shoulder external rotation. Begin lying on your back with your arms at your side and your weights in your hands. Bend your elbows halfway to form the letter L. Keeping your elbows tucked by your ribs, bring the back of your hands towards the bed. It's okay if your hands don't touch the bed. Then return to your starting position. Again, bring the backs of your hands towards the bed as much as you comfortably can, keeping your elbows tucked at your side and return to the starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called elbow flexion. Begin lying on your back with your arms by your side and your palms facing the ceiling. Bend your elbows to bring your hands towards your shoulders, keeping the back of your arms on the bed. Then lower your hands back down towards the bed. Again, bring your hands up towards your shoulders, keeping the backs of your arms on the bed. Then lower your hands down towards the bed. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called elbow extension. Begin lying on your back with your arms lifted to shoulder height. Bend your elbows so that your thumbs touch the pillow. Without moving your shoulders, straighten your elbows back up to the starting position. Again, bend your elbows so your thumbs touch the pillow. Then straighten back up to the starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called forearm rotation. Begin lying on your back with your arms by your side, then bend your elbows to form an L shape. Rotate your forearm so that your hand faces you and then so that it faces away from you. Make sure to keep your arm touching the bed. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called active assistive elbow flexion. 
Begin lying on your back with your hands clasped together and your elbows straight, resting on your stomach. Bend your elbows to bring your hands to your chest. Then return to your starting position. Again, bend your elbows to bring your hands to your chest. Then return to your starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called active assisted elbow extension. Begin lying on your back with your fingers interlaced, arms lifted to shoulder height, and elbows straight. Bend your elbows so that your hands reach towards your forehead. Without moving your shoulders, straighten your elbows back up to the starting position. Again, bend your elbows and straight. Be mindful not to move your shoulders. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called active assisted forearm rotation. Begin lying on your back with your affected arm bent halfway at the elbow, forming the letter L. Use your opposite hand to rotate your affected forearm so that the palm of your hand faces you. Then use your opposite hand to rotate your affected forearm so that the palm of your hand faces away from you. Again, rotate the palm of your hand to face you, using your opposite hand to help and then rotate it to face away from you. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted elbow flexion. Begin lying on your back, arms by your side, palms facing the ceiling, and your weight in your hands. Bend your elbows to bring your hands towards your shoulders, keeping the back of your arms on the bed. Then lower your hands back down towards the bed. Again, bend the elbows to bring your hands towards the shoulders and lower your hands back to the bed. Make sure to keep the back of your arms on the bed. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted elbow extension. Begin lying on your back, weights in your hands and your arms lifted to shoulder height. Bend your elbows so that the weights come towards the pillow. Without moving your shoulders, straighten your elbows reaching towards the ceiling. Again, bend your elbows to bring the weights towards the pillow. Be mindful not to move your shoulders and straighten your elbows again. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called wrist flexion and extension. Begin lying on your back with your elbows bent palms facing each other. Bend your wrists back so that your palms face the ceiling. Then bend your wrists in the opposite direction so that your palms face your stomach. Again, bend your wrists back so your palms face the ceiling and in the opposite direction so that the palms face your stomach. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called active assisted wrist flexion and extension. Begin lying on your back with your affected elbow bent halfway. Use your opposite hand to assist your affected wrist so that your palms face the ceiling. Then with the help from your opposite hand, bend your wrist forward so that your palms face your stomach. Again, with the help of your other hand, bend your wrist back so your palms faces the ceiling and then bend it forward so that the palm of your hand faces your stomach. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted forearm rotation. Begin lying on your back with your weights in your hands and your arms bent halfway at the elbow, forming the letter L. Rotate your forearms so that the palms of your hands face you then rotate your forearms to the opposite direction so that the palms of your hands face away from you. Again, rotate so palms of your hands face you and in the opposite direction, away from you. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called resisted wrist flexion and extension. Begin lying on your back with your weights in your hands, your elbows
double bent and your thumb stays with you. Bend your wrist back so that your palms face the ceiling. Then bend your wrist forward so that your palms faces your stomach. Again, bend your wrist back so that your palms faces the ceiling and forward so that your palms face your stomach. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called claw. Begin with your wrist straight and your fingers open and straight. Bend your fingers at the last two knuckles to form a claw hand. Then open your fingers back to the starting position. Again, bend your knuckles to make a claw and then open your fingers to return to the starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called duck bill. Begin with your fingers straight and spread apart. Keeping your fingers straight, bend your hand knuckles to form a duck bill shape. Then straighten and open the fingers. Again, while keeping the fingers straight, bend your knuckles to form a duck bill. Then straighten your knuckles to open your fingers back to the starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called composite flexion. Begin with your hand open and fingers spread apart. Make a full fist with your hand, then return to the starting position, spreading apart your fingers. Again, make a full fist and return to the starting position. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. This exercise is called finger opposition. Begin with your hand open and fingers straight. Bring the tip of your thumb to touch the tip of your fingers one at a time as best as you can. Again, bring the tip of your thumb to touch your fingers one at a time as best as you can. Repeat the sequence eight to 10 times. This exercise is called finger extension. With your palms resting on the table, lift your fingers one at a time, then bring them back to the table. Alternate fingers so that you lift each finger of your hand. Repeat this exercise eight to 10 times. 